So the multiplicative inverse of a complex number. Uh, so before we talk about what the multiplicative inverse of a complex number is, let's talk about what the multiplicative inverse of just a number is. So let's say I had the number 5. Uh, the multiplicative inverse is a number that I can multiply 5 by to get 1. So that's what the inverse is. Multiply a number by something, question mark, and the answer is 1. And if you stop and think for a moment, let's just call that x. The question really is 5 times x equals 1 or 5x equals 1. That means that x equals 1 fifth. So the general f rule for this is that if I have a number, the multiplicative inverse is 1 on that number. You can see that I had a number 5. The multiplicative inverse is 1 on 5. And the answer a times 1 on a is 1. So that's the multiplicative inverse of just regular numbers. Now we need to find the multiplicative inverse of a complex number. So here we have two complex numbers. Uh, and it's important to note that here, so z to the negative 1, that's the sort of symbol, the notation that we use for a multiplicative inverse. And a multiplicative inverse actually works exactly this. Oh, for a complex number, actually works exactly the same as a regular number. So let's say I have um, a complex number. So let's say that z equals. Uh, I've just got something written over here. Z equals three plus four i. The multiplicative inverse, so z to the negative one, is just this raised to the power of negative one, which puts it on the bottom of a fraction. Three plus four. I. All right, so now I know what z is and I know what uh, z to the negative 1 is. But that's really ugly. Um, having a complex number on the bottom of a fraction is just not the way that we do business. So the question is, if z equals 3 plus 4i, find z to the negative 1. All right, so I've done my first step here. Um, I'll just write that up formally. So if z equals 3 plus 4i, find the inverse or the multiplicative inverse. So, I can say that z to the negative 1 equals that, 1 on 3 plus 4i. But I've already explained that that's very, very ugly. And the way that we can do this, this is going to feel really familiar because we can do the same thing that we did with thirds. We can um, use a conjugate to make this a little bit neater. So I can say that that's the same as 1 over 3 plus 4i times 3 minus 4i, 3 minus 4i. Okay, so 1 times 3 minus 4i is 3 minus 4i. And then this is going to, we're going to use like our FOIL method. So 3 times 3 will be 9. Uh, 4i times 3 would be positive 12i. Negative 4 times 3, negative 4i. So those are going to cancel each other out. And then be careful here. 4 times negative 4 is negative 16. But i times i is i squared, which is negative 1. So negative 16 times negative 1 is positive 16. Boom. So now I have 3 minus 4i over 25. That's pretty good. Um, but we really want to be able to split it into real and imaginary components. So 3 over 25 minus 4i over 25. Or 4 over 25i, something like that. So that is my multiplicative inverse of that. Uh, and I could prove that. I could just do 3 plus 4i, so I could check. And I know a lot of us are really good at checking stuff. I could check this by doing 3 plus 4i and multiplying it by 3 over 25 minus 4i over 25. And if that is equal to 1, then I'm correct. If it's not equal to 1, then something's gone horribly wrong. So I'm not going to go through the business of checking that now. I'm just going to get you to take my word for it. Uh, now what's going to happen is I'm going to rub all of this off and I'm going to just give us a general rule for this. If I've just got a general complex number, what's the multiplicative inverse of that general number? So here we're going to come up with a general rule. So if um, z, I'll use my little line there, if z equals a plus bi, find the multiplicative inverse of that. Uh, so it doesn't matter what a is, it doesn't matter what b is, we should be able to come up with something. So, uh, the multiplicative inverse, before I go on, 
You should just do this. You should pause the video and you should do it yourself because it'd be better if you proved it. All right, so the multiplicative inverse is going to be 1 over a plus bi. Uh, and then that's going to be uh, 1 over a plus bi times a plus bi over a plus bi. And 1 times a plus bi is a plus bi. And then if I do, uh, uh oh, 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 slow, slow down, conjugates, conjugates, 1 times a minus bi, minus bi, okay, so it's going to be a minus bi on the top, and then if I do a plus bi times a minus bi, I'm going to get a squared, and then, again, we have to be really careful here. B times negative B is going to be negative B, but I squared is going to be uh, negative I, so it's going to be positive. So, my general rule, complete, uh, because those middle bits cancel each other out, I get A minus B I over A squared plus B squared. Um, and I could probably break it apart, because we always tend to break it apart. A over A squared plus B squared. Uh, minus um, bi over a squared plus b squared. All right, there's a nice little general rule for the um, for the multiplicative inverse. We tend to sort of use that as our general rule, and then just split it up, and then just split it up at the end there. So that's the multiplicative inverse of a complex number. We got to use conjugates again, which is fun. Uh, and now we have this nice little neat, neat rule.